Man, same shirt. We both same are wearing shirt. the same shirt. Yeah. It's our hey, last one. Though. We both have black and white images. I guess our last discussion about color versus black and white really influenced you, John. <laughs> I want to say, oh no! I've in this in this session of recording eight of these. I think I had what Hawaii, and I had a colorful aurora. But those are that's the canned ones that come with Zoom. Uh, yeah, but I like putting up the black and white ones. Did you have a canned aurora from? Yeah, that's in that's in the uh, the the uh, the Zoom their library. Yeah, it's in their virtual backgrounds. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, I, that's the one I played. Come on, uh, keep up. Keep up. <laughs> hey, we're both photographing objects here. And I think that a lot of our work is objects. Uh -huh. uh, easy to photograph objects. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, my first thought on that is, is what I was taught when I studied with Freeman Patterson back in 2004. I was lucky enough to go to South Africa to be with Freeman, who, you know, is one of my all-time heroes as a photographer. I love his work. I really love his writing. And one of the things he taught that time was stop naming things for what they are. Mm. Rather, see them as shapes of some sort, right? And I believe it was Monet said, we need to stop naming things in order to see. that. That's loosely. That's not exactly right. But essentially what Monet was saying was, if we see it as a, and the one I always like to use is, if we see it as a rock rather than an oval, we see a evergreen tree as a triangle rather than an evergreen tree. We see these the bridge and a geary structure and piece of architecture, right? Not as a geary building or not as, in this case, the Ravenel Bridge down in Charleston. It allows us to make more meaningful, more expressive images when we stop thinking about them as the object or the thing that they are, but rather an element that we're going to now use in a composition. So that's my first thought on it. It's much, it is easy to say, I'm going to make a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. And you go out there and you make a picture of that bridge. A lot harder to make an expressive, a personally expressive even image of the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, I think when we think of it as an object, we're more likely to include the entire bridge or the entire building because we think we're trying to show that bridge or that building. Yeah, and I'm always drawn to shapes and contra especially contrasts in black and white and lines and things. And I think these are two very good examples of that. Yes. And we're trying to, I think you and I were both in this case, trying to be a little bit more expressive as to what were we being taken by. And so if we pulled back on the across the river where this bridge is, as we do, and we wait for sunset and we have that beautiful sunset light and you have the whole bridge with the water, with the city behind it, to me, that's a postcard grab shot, right? Goes back to our last discussion about color and the argument for color. In that case, it's just a pretty picture, right? But walking up and then saying, what is it I'm being taken by? Well, I'm being taken by all the cool lines, for sure. And so now I'm doing what Freeman suggested. I'm no longer seeing it as a bridge. Now my job as an expressive photographer is to figure out a way to create an image that leads me right in and uses all those lines to create a compelling photograph. Now, we are talking about photographing objects. Another thought is why is it we're drawn to objects rather than people i rarely photograph people well some yeah, people love photographing people though yeah but i hear a lot of photographers say they're they're intimidated by it but i agree with that there are a lot of those as well I mean, and, and I think in general, there's more landscape object photography than there is people photography. I would think that's probably true. And yet, if we're really looking to, boy, show emotion, I think of, again, Migrant Mother. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder why I don't photograph people more. Well, and you have a little bit. You showed that image of the the person taking a picture of another person. That's an interesting idea for for a project. And you've done ghosts where there are people that turn into ghosts. So those are certainly people. But you're right. I feel the same way. I wish I could. And, and maybe I just need to do it. Just get the courage to go to Philadelphia with a small camera and make my Fuji X100 so I can be more inconspicuous and play with, you know, people, street photography. Because, I, man, I see some and it's incredibly expressive. And, and and I think of street photography as that street photography is a black and white subject to me. Oh, that's totally natural. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was a teenager, boy, I was fearless and I was photographing people all the time. I had no fear of getting out in front of people, getting in their face and photographing them. But boy, now yeah. the thought is a bit intimidating. Yeah. I wonder why that is. Why are we afraid? Is it? Here's a, let me add to that. When I go to Cuba, no problem. Yes. People, the whole trip. It's Africa crazy. too. It's somehow expected. What is that all about? I don't know. Comments below. <laughs> Why? Are Isn't we... that, because I think it's true that when you go to Cuba, they are so used to being photographed by tourists from all countries that I think it's become somewhat commonplace. But I, my neighbor out riding on his riding mower. I'm, I'm not going to get my camera and make a photograph of him on his riding mower. I'm not going to do it. Or go down to downtown, wherever your downtown is, and walk around with a camera and photograph people. Because yeah. you're going to have people who be annoyed or, or even angry. Oh, my gosh. I actually photographed somebody. He was on the street in our town. And it was just with my iPhone. And he had a monkey. And I took his photograph, and I got a lecture about that I shouldn't photograph him without his permission. Huh. And in my mind, the way I was raised and grown up as a photographer was, if you're in the public, you're fair game. Yes, and that's true. Boy, did I get a a, a very strong lecture about that, though. But, so please tell me you didn't punch him or anything. <laughs> no, he's about to sick his monkey on me. <laughs> All right. Hey, this has been fun. Interested in your comments as usual below. Comments below. Subscribe, ring the bell, whatever the heck that does. I mean, it's, I hear other people say, Jason has taught us to say that. So do all those things. And go visit Jason's website, too. I had put the wrong link when we did that show. Oh, no. But oh, I no. pinned it as the first comment so that people can go see Jason's great show. He just put oh. up some new comment and I the new content. And I, I was the first one to comment on his show. So that was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you there, Cole. Take care.